There's a lot of talk right now about the LA Chargers, and, and rightfully so. There are many people, right? Um, you know, people that are well respected in the sports journalist world calling this team a dark horse team, right? A Super Bowl uh, dark horse contender. I don't know if I would go that far, um, but they're going to be a good team. They're, they're definitely going to take a huge leap in the right direction, right? Justin Herbert uh, had a phenomenal rookie year, right? Tyrod Taylor goes down, he comes in. You know, Justin Herbert was selected with the sixth pick in the draft. He's out of Oregon, comes in, you know, uh, breaks a rookie record, uh, 31 passing TDs his first year as a quarterback, just misses, you know, the, the, the passing record, right? That's hailed by Andrew Luck, just misses it. And, um, you know, the Chargers got going by the end of the year, right? I believe they won four straight to close out the season. And if you look at their record, there's a, a bunch of games there where, you know, they should have won. There are a lot of games there, actually, they should have won. Um, you know, I, I don't always like to use that argument, though, because there's a lot of teams that can make that argument. Like, if you look at most NFL schedules, a lot of teams lose games by less than one score. A lot of teams lose games in the fourth quarter due to an interception, a fumble. So I'm always weary of that argument because practically everyone can use it. But if you watched this Chargers team, you know, you understand why they had to let go of Anthony Lynn, right? You just, you understand it. You don't like it. You're never in favor of anyone losing their job, but you get it, right? And in comes in Brandon Staley, right? Uh, the defensive coordinator or who used to be the defensive coordinator for the Rams, you know, and it's his first year as the head coach for the LA Chargers, right? And uh, he did a phenomenal job with the Rams defense, right? Did a phenomenal job. Had a lot of talent to work with, right? But he also did a phenomenal job. And, you know, the Chargers have made a ton of moves, right, in terms of their management, right? They have a new DC defensive coordinator, Ronaldo Hill. They have a new OC, Joe Lombardi, right? Like, you know, uh, uh, the only steadfast person there in management is Tom Telesco, the GM, right? Like a new head coach, a new OC, a new DC. There's a lot of movement because there's a lot of excitement. And when you have the right ingredients, you need to make sure you have the correct leadership, right? And that's what, you know, the Chargers feel they have right now. They feel they have the right ingredients. Now it's time to bring in the people that know how to use those ingredients, right? And it's really going to come down to Brandon Staley as a head coach. We, we don't have a record of him as a head coach. You know, we've seen him, you know, on coaching staffs, um, you know, with, with other positions, but not as a head of coach. This is his first year, you know running a team himself. But we did see him uh, with the Rams, right? And the Rams finished number one against the pass. They finished in the top five against the run. And they were the best defensive team in football, right? But he also had a lot of talent, right? Aaron Donald is arguably the best defender in football right now. He had Leonard Floyd. I think Leonard Floyd had double-digit sacks. You know, they had Jalen Ramsey, arguably one of the best cornerbacks in football. They had Darius Williams, right? you know, an up and coming cornerback, you know, and, and I believe if he was on any other team, he would be receiving high praises, just like Jalen Ramsey. He's just kind of overshadowed by the greatness of Jalen Ramsey, but Darius Williams ain't no joke. And last year he had John Johnson, who's now with the Browns, right? He had Troy Hill, who's now with the Browns, by the way, but that, you know, that, that was a stacked defense. So Brandon Staley had a lot of talent to work with, with that Rams defense. It shouldn't take away from his coaching job, but but there was a lot of talent there to work with. Last year, the Chargers were sixth in pass offense, right? And they were 18th in, in, in rush offense, right? So uh, with, with, in terms of passing the ball, good. Could they be better? Yeah, but they were really good. They were really good. And with the run offense, right, that needs to improve. It needs to improve. The rush offense needs to improve. And I think there's a good chance of this, right? Austin Eckler right? He's, he's like an Alvin Kamara, right? He's really good. He can run the ball and he can catch the ball. And in his defense, he was working behind a line that was ranked dead last by pro football focus, right? Alvin Kamara, on the other hand, for the, for the New Orleans Saints is working behind an offensive line that's ranked in the top five, right? So, so yeah, I think Austin Eckler can have a big year this upcoming year because the Chargers addressed their offensive line, and I believe they fixed it. And they did this through free agent signings, right? And they did this through the draft also. 
So they addressed a huge weakness they had on offense, which I think in turn is going to lead to Austin Eckler having a huge year from the line of scrimmage, right? I wouldn't be surprised if he finishes with, you know, you know, 15, 16, 1700 yards from the line of scrimmage, you know, combined receiving yards and rushing yards. He, he can have a really big year with this O-line and with Justin Herbert coming back as the quarterback for the LA Chargers. One of the difficult things for the Chargers this year is their schedule, though. If you look at their schedule, man, right out of the gate, they're going up against a, a, a tough schedule, right? You know, it's like no rest. Their first game is against a playoff team, Washington, right? And, 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 and in the Washington game, their first game of the season, right, you have AP Offensive Rookie of the Year, Justin Herbert, going up against the Defensive Player of the Year, Chase Young, right? So it's going to be a fun game, right? And you have Washington. They brought in Ryan Fitzmagic, right? And, and that Washington team is deadly right? Especially if Ryan Fitzpatrick can do enough because that Washington defense is no joke, right? It's no joke. So they, they have a tough game right out of the bat. And I don't remember all the games, but I know if you look at their schedule, they play a ton of difficult teams, right? The first six games of the year, and then they have a bye. So right out of the gate, this team's got to come out firing on all cylinders if they're going to have success. Now, last year, the Chargers on 55% of their snaps played a cover three defense, right? Compared to Brandon Staley, when he was running the defense for the Rams, they only played a cover three on 35% of their snaps. Uh, Brandon Staley, when he was with the Rams, right, as the DC, on 45% of their snaps, they played a split safety zone type of coverage, okay? And, and one of his preferred methods is quarter, quarter halves. So let me break this down in, in, in layman terms. The type of defense that Brandon Staley runs against the pass and run requires extremely talented DBs and safeties. They have to have a high football IQ, right? And they have to be able to make reads fast. They have to, you know, read the tight end, read the O-line and, and, and make a decision fast. If, if this is a run play, if this is a pass play, and this will determine what they do on the field in terms of whether they drop back into a zone or whether, you know, they proceed to the line to go play the run, you know, and whatnot. In other words, Brandon Staley relies on talented players in the backfield, right? And he had this with the Rams. He had Jalen Ramsey, he had Darius Williams, he had Troy Hill, right? He had John Johnson, right? These are serious names and serious players. So you can get away with playing defense this way. This is going to be the big question for the Chargers. Do they have the talent in their secondary, you know, to do what Brandon Staley was doing with the Rams over here? I'm a big believer in coaching, but I also believe coaching can only do so much if you don't have the ingredients. And this is why players like Derwin James, Nasir Adderley, right, and Michael Davis are going to be huge for the Rams, right? Don't forget Derwin James before the injury, before the pandemic, right? He made the Pro Bowl team, right? And he also made the All Pro team, right? And Nasir Adderley has a huge upside. And of course, Michael Davis was, was big, right? Was big. So they have the potential. I just don't know if they have, you know, like I said, when you go from Jalen Ramsey, John Johnson, right, Troy Hill, and Darius Williams, right, to Michael Davis, Nasir Adderley, right, and, 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 and Chris Harris, right, and then they drafted Asante Samuel Jr., which could be huge, by the way, you know, I, I, especially given the defense that Brandon was playing with the Rams last season, you know, that's one of my questions. And listen, I'm not trying to take a shot at the Chargers. I'm not saying they can't do it, right? Yes, Brandon Staley is an excellent coach, but the kind of defense that he runs requires a certain level of talent and a certain level of football IQ. The defense Brandon Staley was playing with the Rams, right, is very aggressive and there's a huge payoff, but there's also major risk, right? Like it's a huge payoff. It's very aggressive. But if you do it wrong, you pay dearly. And I like coaches that coach this way. But like I said, I believe you need the talent in order to do this. I'm not saying the Chargers do not have the talent, 
just the jury's out, right? Like, you know, uh, uh, Derwin James, is he going to be that same guy from 2018? Nasir Adderley, is he going to take that leap this year? Michael Davis, right? Is he going to continue to increase and play, you know, at that next level? Like, you know, and yes, Brandon Staley is the right man for the job, right? So there's a lot of X factors. And remember, you have a new defensive coordinator too, right? And right out of the gate, you have a tough schedule. So there's a lot of X factors there that, that you know, scream caution, but I'm not saying it's something that the Chargers cannot overcome. It's just they have their work cut out for themselves. The good news though, is that is that they still have a powerful offense, right? And it's only gonna get better. They have Justin Herbert, like I said, AP Offensive Rookie of the Year. And the one weakness they had was their offensive line, and they addressed it in a major way, right? They drafted Rashawn Slater. Uh, they signed Matt Filer, right, from uh, Pittsburgh. They signed Corey Lindsley uh, from Green Bay, uh, Ode Abushi, right, uh, from Detroit. They already have Brian Bulaga. Like, their entire O-line has been addressed, and it's fixed. And then they even, you know, drafted that other kid, uh, Brandon Hymas, right? So uh, they 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 uh, they addressed their O line in a major way, and now you have to pay attention to the Chargers' offense, which is going to be you know one of the 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 better offenses in the NFL next year, right? So even though I have that question about their secondary, when I look at their offense, right, they can score with the best of them. Hey everyone, thank you for watching SP Sports today. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. This way you are notified when we post new videos. Also, if you have a moment, leave a comment and check out our other videos.